How does a weary world rejoice? And that has been our theme throughout this Advent season. And today's response is, we allow ourselves to be amazed. Amen. How does a weary world rejoice? And I thought about that response, you know, allowing ourselves to be amazed. And I, and I have to say, I had to sit with it for a while. When was the last time I was amazed? I think ministers have this sense of not letting on when they are weary or not acknowledging it. And it's not just ministers. Too often, we judge people as being strong who can weather any situation or others as weak. People, whether we perceive them to be strong or weak, can experience weariness that can be overwhelming and drag us down and prevent us from experiencing the amazement, the joy, and more. Zachariah had been silenced for some time because he could not grasp the message when the angel Gabriel told him he would have a son. Scripture says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense, for he was in the temple. It was his turn to serve as priest. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and he was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in age, years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news, and now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come to true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, Elizabeth, who was now pregnant, she was secluded. She had isolated herself in her home. And in the six months, she receives a surprise visit from Mary, who is now also with child. MJ, I'm going to ask you to put up that next slide of the, the artist rendition of the wonderment. So actually, it's the picture that you find on the bulletin. For those of you that do, and you would have gotten it through email. It is the front of the bulletin. The picture is an artist's vision of the moment of John's birth and the restoration of Zachariah's voice. Zachariah is in awe and he stands with amazement because God has done a great and new thing in his life and in Elizabeth's life. When we get that picture, <laughs> it's, coming. it's coming. You will see that those who surround Zachariah and Elizabeth, their eyes are wide open. They are in awe. They are amazed. And when we see the picture, and we see it closely, you will see Elizabeth 
enjoying the moment with her newborn son, John. The artist shares that in her drawing this, she, she pictured that for Elizabeth, her moment of amazement was not at that time. The moment of amazement for her, yes, thank you. <laughs> the moment of amazement for her is when Mary visited her. It was that moment when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So in a loud voice, she exclaims, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. For why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt with joy. So we see, again, if we look closely, you'll see the amazement in everybody's eyes. But here's Elizabeth. And she's got that little baby in her hands. And it's just a wonder. Friends, what do we need? <laughs> to be amazed, to be in awe. To be amazed requires intentionality and perhaps especially these days. We can become discouraged and weary on a steady diet of world and local news. There are many that on the outside, yes, they look strong and yes, are capable human beings, but they yearn to acknowledge the weariness that they are feeling. Weariness from jobs that don't pay enough or are demanding. Rents increasing, mortgages to pay, and wondering how can I afford this? Trying one's best to care for one's family, whether it's caring for one's children, grandchildren, caring for one's parents, someone who cannot care for themselves. The response to the question, how does a weary world rejoice? This response, we allow ourselves to be amazed, causes us to pause because we are reminded that we need to allow ourselves to be amazed. Amen. Zachariah stood in amazement and joy at the birth of his son. Zachariah sang a song of gratitude. Elizabeth, upon receiving Mary at her home, she felt that baby not just move, but leap and was amazed, filled with joy, filled with the Holy Spirit, joy, awe, because the baby leaped with joy when he heard Mary's voice. Sometimes we think we need to contemplate the universe and the stars to feel awe. But perhaps all we really need is to have our eyes open and our hearts open to the possibility of what this day holds. Early this year, an article appeared in the New York Times entitled, How a Bit of Awe Can Improve Our Health. Let me just share a quote. While many of us associate awe with dramatic events, the truth is awe can be a part of everyday life. It isn't just about seeing the vastness of the Grand Canyon, but it's also found in the witnessing of an act of kindness. It wasn't that long ago that our little quest, <laughs> Quest Washington, began his journey with Ron Yadidia and the New York Piano Academy. Amen. 
On the day Ron met with Quest and Torino, his father, I was at the church. I was thrilled to be in the presence of them and Megan and see how everybody went back so many years. They all knew each other. And I was like, wow, how beautiful is that? Amen. The time came and Ron invited them upstairs to test, to test uh, Quest and to speak with Quest and his father. So Torino and Quest, they get up. Quest stands be between Ron and Torino. And in that instance, he takes his father's hand and he takes Ron's hand. It's not that they took his hand. He reached up and he took their hands. That moment remains with me. I was amazed and I was in awe of this moment of trust and innocence. The, mo the movement to reach out and grasp these adult hands reminded me of the openness of a child. The ability to find joy in the simplest of things. I was in awe and I felt joy. When was the last time we were amazed? While many of us know it when we feel it, awe is not easy to define. How do we allow ourselves to be amazed? We need to pay attention. Maybe for some it's turning to music, hearing a new arrangement of a familiar song. Maybe it's taking a walk in the neighborhood, seeing and listening to our surroundings. I ask you, do birds still sing in New York City? Yes, they do. It is all around us. If we become intentional about being open to it. Our challenge is that, yes, being in awe can help us experience joy and more as we saw from Zechariah and Elizabeth and the crowd around them. Sometimes the weariness that we are feeling is so heavy. What can we do? Well, I'll tell you this one thing we shouldn't do when we see somebody in that state. We should never say to someone, Get over it. <laughs> Move on. Or oh, stop being such a Debbie Downer. <laughs> and I'm sure there's other things we can come up with. Scripture does not say that upon visiting Elizabeth, Mary chastised her cousin for being in seclusion and isolation. Mary visited Elizabeth. She hurried to Elizabeth's house after receiving the news of her pregnancy. Being present in people's lives, being present for each other requires time, effort, and yes, intentionality. It's not an afterthought. To be present for one another is to be present, not to give advice on how someone should change to be more joyful or to experience the amazement of life, but it is to be present, to be connected, to be still and know that God is God. Amen. Friends, we don't know at times what people are going through because we don't have that ability. I can't read people's minds. Even, even if I see body language, I can, I can guess, but I am not God. I am not God. Sometimes we don't even want to acknowledge our own feelings. To acknowledge weariness is to acknowledge that we are downcast, discouraged, and numb. We can't feel anything because it is too difficult to feel. We cannot fathom letting anyone into our space. 
As people of God, we trust in the power of God's Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all things, trusting that God will make a way even when we wonder and say, as the psalmist wrote, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and have sorrow in my heart day after day? How long will my enemy triumph over me? How long? There may very well be people in our path today who just need to hear a word. Hello. There may be people around us today who may not need words, but may need a demonstration of love, a hug, a strong handshake. If we are honest enough with ourselves, maybe we are that person. We need that connection to experience the joy, to experience being in awe. For God is with us even when we think and feel that God is against us or has forgotten us. Friends, when was the last time we were amazed? It doesn't require privilege. It doesn't require wealth. Awe is just around us. And I ask you, look around, look around. Will we allow ourselves to be amazed? Will we open our eyes and our hearts to be in awe of what God has surrounded us with?